going to go to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Also, a win total at 10 and a half wins. 57% returning production on the offensive side, and I think we know where the big question mark lies with them at quarterback. 77% returning production on the defensive side. Where do we see the Buckeyes going? I think this is a team that we talk about every year. We talk um, about what's next for the Buckeyes, but we never had the conversation. What now at quarterback, it feels like. Let's so, see. Yeah, this is what's what what is the expectation for Kyle McCord in 2023? I don't think it's it's not to be CJ Stroud. I think it's maybe to be a little more JJ McCarthy. Like manage the game, don't turn the ball over. You have so many weapons, so many options. You have one of the best play callers in college football, one of the best offensive schemes in college football. Just be you, manage the game, and, and don't try to do too much. I think guys are just going to automatically be open anyways. So I don't think this is something that we're going to look to Kyle McCord and think, well, he's he's got to be Heisman caliber because he really doesn't. Um, I Just looking at the offense really quick, obviously you have Emeka Obuka and Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison is easily the best receiver in college football, one of the best NFL caliber guys we've seen in probably the last half decade, full decade or so. Um, the line lost both starting offensive tackles to the NFL. They were NFL kind of guys. They bring in, uh, bring back. Uh, these are high end NFL line. guys. These are high end tackles that they lose. Yes, not just any tackles. These are high end. So does that mean is he going to have a little more time, or are they going to have to rely on the running game a little bit um, to relief the passing game? You know, you get Trayvon Williams back, Mayan Williams back. Oh, Trayvon Henderson back. Sorry, Mayan Williams back. Um, they're like. I think they're like third team all conference guys. I don't think they they take I think you off that's the a board better stable than you think. What's that? That's a good one two punch back there, man. It is good. I, I, I but it's not, you know, I the comparison's probably not fair as to Quorum and Edwards, but they're they're a good it's a stable running back room. So we'll see what they bring on bring in on offense, but I think talking about McCord is just manage the game, man. I yep. don't think he's gotta be crazy. And if Kyle McCord is not the guy that ends up panning out for them, they do have Devin Brown, also a very highly recruited kid out of high school that Ryan Day seems to have a lot of confidence in both of them at the moment. No, ne neither one of them has stepped up in front of the other necessarily, but they do have talent to pick from. It's not like this is a low talent uh, stable in the quarterback room. This is two guys who are really talented. And would you hope that before fall camp or early in fall camp, you would have a starter name? Yes, but I think there's a lot of assumptions that McCord is going to be that guy. Defensively, Tommy Eichenberg and Chambers headline a really good linebacking core, and you get Jim Knowles in a second-year scheme. I think that's something that we need to outline again. That's Knowles in a second year at a place that had a, you know, a lower defensive reputation. He brings that scheme from Oklahoma State, and I expect a year two bump, especially when you have all the returning production they do on the defensive side of the ball. They're going to get a good bump out of that team. JT Tumaloao and Jack Sawyer will be your elite guys on the edge. They're going to be able to create quarterback pressure. They're going to be able to get to the quarterback and stop the run game. And again, you know, the secondary decided that the portal was the right way to go. They lose three pieces um, in depth and talent from last year, but they go into the portal and they grab Jihad Carter, among other names. Reese, when you're talking Buckeyes, you're the guy, you're the one with the shirt on, I should add. Like, yeah. This is... Apparently your team for the day. Yeah, right. Wild move. Wild yeah. move to put that shirt on today. It's a wild move. We always we always wear the – Not that shit. Thing. Why not? <laughs> That's what I got. I either had this or Michigan. I picked this one. Oh, that hurts. I look nice, I look nice in this shirt. Whatever. Fuck off. <laughs> um, but no, Ohio State, you guys keep mentioning the quarterback is a big question mark. But when you bring back four of your weapons that – uh, let's see, Mayan Williams and Trayvon Henderson, I had that they combined for 1,396 yards with 21 touchdowns. Harrison Jr. and Emeka Buka combined for 2,400 yards and 24 touchdowns. You're bringing those guys back for a guy who's going to be a, a new quarterback in college. That's probably a good place to start is bringing mm -hmm. back guys that know how to play football. And an offense that scored, um, they averaged 44 points last year. They're, like, obviously, C.J. Stroud, yep, a Heisman finalist, top number two pick. He's good, but this offense won't miss a beat. He'll be just fine. They'll find a way to keep scoring. They did the they did what they knew in the portal, uh, and just fun fact they went into the portal as well for a new kicker because I think they were tired of looking at that guy hit a knuckleball from fifty yards out for a chance to go oh to the national god, title. Just so. make the kick of their national champions. Yeah, it's tough. Just make your it's kick. Tough. But they they went Give to USC and they got Parker Lewis, so Give they got a, a new guy, and they're not they're not letting they're not letting that guy try to decide their season again. So there's just you know I'm thinking 
I'm thinking, you know, that old Wayne Gretzky quote slash Michael Scott, you miss 100 shots that you don't take. I don't know. He'd have missed it just as much if he never kicked the damn thing. You gotta try to left. Whoa. You gotta try to kick it with his left foot. That thing off the foot I had no chance. Bro's gonna get drafted by the Bears. It's the wrong, wrong zip code that thing was traveling into. Parks, anything to add on the Buckeyes? I know you had um, some thoughts on this team earlier this week. Yeah, so we want to talk about teams that have an unknown piece, and we've already mentioned Kyle McCord, but really, I mean, we're talking about the Ohio State Buckeyes, a team that's never lost eight games in the history of their program. This is a reload. I mean, I have no doubt in the ability that Kyle McCord brings into this team. And then you have to look at one side of the field. If you want to tell me on one side of the field, you can line up Marvin Harrison Jr. And then a Mika Mbuka on the the slot. And then, oh, on the other side, we'll just add in Cade Stover, who stands at 6'5", 270. And uh, you got to throw to one of these guys. It's not really the hardest job in the world. So I'm not going to be open. (laughs) I think the scheme is going to help him a ton. Like that's a scheme that gets guys open all the time. And if the scheme isn't the right play all the time, you have elite route runners and speed on each spot. With talent like that, it is very hard to not be a good quarterback. I mean, you're giving them every weapon you could ask for. So I'm not really worried about them. I think this is going to be a team at the top of the conference yet again. And Ryan Day knows knows what he's doing. Um, It's going to come down to the game for them. Yeah. Before we jump into the win total, like this team wins that semifinal game against Georgia and maybe they win the national title. Maybe they don't. They win the national title. You're looking at them. You're looking at them way different. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at them like we are like right now where a lot of people are like, "Uh, they might be down this year. Are you like, I don't know if you are. I think you're looking at it completely differently. Um, But 10 and a half is the win total. Where does everybody have them? I will start. I have 11 and one to 12 and 0 on this football team. I have 11 and one as well. Over. How if I, went, if I went ten and two with Michigan, I'll go eleven and one with Ohio State. <laughs> I mean, you're so confident over there. I'll Schaefer. just I'll just piece tell. it together. Um, but I think that their their loss is going to be at, at Michigan. So if you noticed, I said Michigan's going to lose to Penn State. Now I'm saying Ohio State's going to lose to Michigan. So you can see where this is going. It's going to be an absolute fuck fest in the Big Ten East yeah. this year. Well, this this is interesting when you look at the schedule. Like they their three toughest games. Um, are on the road at Notre Dame, at Wisconsin, at Michigan. Outside of Penn State at home, I'm, like those are three really tough road games. And you get one at the beginning of the year, one smack dab in the middle, and one to end the year. So like it's spread out. It's not in a you know in a couple in a row like we we're talking about Michigan schedule. But that is where we see them. That's the Buckeyes. That is it for our favorites. Let's jump into 